Welcome to CloudChamp. In this video, we are going to learn about AWS Identity and Access Management Service. Topics covered in this video are what is IAM service, what are the different components of IAM, what are IAM users, groups, IAM roles and the policies, what are different features of IAM service and lastly we will do the hands-on lab for the IAM service. So according to the definition, AWS Identity and Access Management is a web service that enables Amazon Web Services customers to manage users and user permissions in AWS. What this means is you can set up users, groups and roles and attach policies to them to give permissions to each of them. So let's take a look on the IAM dashboard. I am here in my AWS management console. You can search for IAM by typing here in the search bar. So this is the IAM service. You can see there are user groups, users, roles and policies. Let's take a look in what, as you can see, I have two groups in the group section, user groups. One is developer and one is light sale. In the user section, I have three users. This is the one I'm currently using right now. And in the role section, as you can see, there are many roles provided by AWS to us, which you can use whenever you want. And these are the policies. Let's learn each, what are the components here. One more thing, as you can see, there is no option to select any region here because IAM is a global service it's not a regional service IAM is a global service so let's learn about users what are the IAM user an IAM user can be a person or any service what this means is as you can see I have an IAM user name as light let's say light and also I have an IAM user name as cloud ninja so this Cloud Ninja is a developer in my company. So if I want to create an IAM user for someone who is a developer, I can create user from this section. You can have up to 5000 users per AWS account. By default users cannot access anything. So whenever you create a new user, no permissions are allowed attached to them you have to provide permissions as you can see in this section I have attached a permission policy two policies are applied to this which is the user can change password and user can access light sale service so you have to attach the policy by default users cannot access anything the every IAM user has access key and secret access key so whenever you create an IAM user, you have to set a password and a username. Also, you get an access key ID and a secret key access key. Please note that you don't have to share or expose your access key with anyone because if a hacker gets hold of your access keys and secret access keys, you can get in trouble and get a large huge bill in your AWS account. So never share your access key or secret access key. Whenever you create an account, you get this once, you have to save it, keep it safe. So the next topic is root account. When you first create or your AWS account with your email ID, you create, you have a root account. So this is an IAM account. When you first create your AWS account with your email ID, that's the root account. I call root account as a god mode because root account has full administrative permissions and this cannot be restricted. So the best practices while using root account is not to use root account, rather create an IAM account with administrative permissions. So you have, you, AWS suggests you not to use your root account because it has privileges and you can do many things without any restrictions so rather than that you can create a user with administrative permissions so i already have a user this is my user name as nasi 
which has administrative permissions you can as you can see this is the administrator access permission which has all the administrator access permission the second is you have to enable MFA authentication for the root account we have already enabled it but you can I have already enabled the multi-factor authentication for the root account but not for the IAM account so we will set it up in the hands-on section what MFA is you can secure your account by putting a security code which you get on your mobile phone now you can get this on Google Authenticator all the procedure for the MFA will be explained to you in the next section of the hands-on of IAM service just remember that this is an extra security provided to keep your account safe and the third is do not share your root credentials with anyone IAM groups groups is a collection of users policies are attached to groups and applied to every user in that group so we have uh, two groups here the first is admins and the second is the developers group we use groups when we want to attach permissions to many users let's say we have 40 developers in our company and we want all the developers to have same permission this group has the permission that is amazon rds full access and we have a user cloud ninja uh, let's try to add the user in this group we will select the group user and click on add user we will select the user which we want to put it in the group now for now if you see there's no role attached to cloud ninja there's no role attached to cloud ninja and it is not in any of the groups no groups so you can add this user to group from here as well click on the user and select the group add to groups now if you see in the for the cloud ninja you'll see the permission as rds so this is how groups work policies are attached to the groups and the are applied to every user in that group best practice is to use groups to assign permissions to user and when assigning a permission you need use the principle of least privilege means you should only give permissions which are required to the user no unnecessary permission should be given and that's the principle of least privilege the next topic is IAM role an IAM role is an IAM identity with specific permission that you can assign to users or services or any application outside AWS without using any credentials. As you can see in the dashboard, there are many roles provided by AWS to us. Using roles, we can give permissions to users or any other services in the AWS console. Let's consider one of the role. Let's consider this role S3 read only access. This means the EC2 instance will have a role to access S3 buckets, read S3 buckets, and this can be provided to any service or any user or any application outside the AWS without using any credentials. So the role does not have standard long-term credentials such as password or access key associated with it. And when you assume a role, it provides you with temporary security credentials for your role session. The next is the policies. Policies are JSON document that define permissions and can be applied to users, groups and roles. This is what the policy look like. The permission in the policies determine whether the request is allowed or denied. So the policies are attached to users, groups and the roles defining what they can do and what they cannot. In the policies section we can see there are a lot of policies we can create our own or we can use the one provided by AWS. So this is AWS managed and this is customer managed created by me. So let's see if what policy this user has. As you can see here in the permission section, the permission policies we have the administrative access policy and if you click on this 
you can see this the this is the json document this policy says allow all actions on all the resources so this is the administrative access policy which allows everything on all the resources so this is how the policy look like uh, we have covered iam rules policies and users groups now we will learn about the features of iam so using iam we can have centralized control of your aws account what this means is you can control creation rotation and cancellation of each users security credentials you can change them you can create them or rotate them the second is you can share you can have shared access to your aws account users can share the resources for the collaborative project if you have developers and testers so you want them to work on the same project which is uploaded on your aws cloud account so you can use iam to have shared access to your aws account the third is granular granular permissions what this means is you can use to set a permission that users can use a particular service but not the other service so you want developers only to access a certain service and a tester to access a certain service you can use it through iam the next is identity federation what this means is we can use facebook or active directory or linkedin to log in into our aws account rather than using any password or credentials so identity federation is a feature provided in iam the next is the multi factor authentication which is an extra security by putting a security code along with the password and the username to keep our account secure the next is you can provide temporary access for users devices and services where necessary this can be done using roles or amazon sts service which will be explained in the upcoming sessions the last feature of the iam is it supports it supports pci dss compliance what pci dss compliance is it stands for payment card industry data security standard and it is a compliance framework if you are taking credit card information then you should have this compliance so this was the overview of aws iam we covered aws iam users groups roles and policies we also looked about what are the features of iam if you have any questions or any queries or any advice anything to say please comment and for more cloud and devops videos you can subscribe to this channel the next video will be hands on lab for the iam service where we will create new users new groups and how to set up mfa and all the things that are discussed in this video so for hands up uh, check the next video thank you and have a good day